I have two brief questions I'd like to ask, if I may. Hi, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brendan Malone, and you're watching The Daily Question. Today's question of the day, what's wrong with It's a Scary Time for Boys? Now, the reason I'm asking that question is because a couple of weeks ago, during the height of the hysteria around the Brett Kavanaugh nomination, Donald Trump made a public statement about the fact that it's a scary time for men if you can uh, put aside the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. So basically, you can accuse any man of sexual assault or rape, and, and that allegation is to be believed as being absolutely true without actually testing the allegation properly first. So in other words, the presumption of innocence until guilt is thrown out the window, and instead it is now replaced with this idea that any man who is accused of sexual assault or rape is to be treated as guilty until proven otherwise. Now, I don't need to go into the details, and you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see why that is a very, very bad and dangerous idea, and why that would be a legitimate fear for men to have. Uh, in any society they're living in which wants to go down this path. Now, in response to that comment, a lady called Lindsay Lab uh, got on social media and posted a, a, a little ditty that she wrote about this, grabbed herself a ukulele and wrote a little song and, and listed all of her fears. Now, this little ditty went viral. Uh, she called it, It's a Scary Time for Boys. And it went so viral that Jimmy Kimmel saw it. And Jimmy Kimmel invited on, on, her on to her show and she performed it live. When I was first assessing how I was going to respond to this when some people alerted me to the song. Initially, I looked at the lyrics of the song and I thought I would go through all the lyrics and point out the fact that there's a lot of falsehoods in here. Um, like, for example, I can't use public transport after 7 p.m. Well, that, I mean, that's not even true. I, I can't come to the door wearing silk pajamas. Again, like, that's not true either. So there's a lot of these sort of little statements here that are not true. And I could have also explored the fact that a lot of the fears she lists here aren't exclusive to females, they actually apply to men, and I recognise some of those fears in my own life. And so there's sort of, it's not simply females have these fears and males don't. And, and I could have also explored the fact that the final line of this song is just flat out untrue. And, and her uh, rise to fame, and very quick rise to fame on the back of the song, actually proves how false the final line of the song is. That The final line goes like this, and I can't ever speak earnestly about all these fears. Well, I genuinely do believe she is being earnest when she speaks about these fears, and that this song was an earnest attempt for her to express herself, and, and honestly, about how she feels and, and the ideas that she holds about these issues. And that went viral very, very quickly, and it got to the point of, of going so viral that she was invited on a late night comedy show to perform the song live there. So the idea that women can't speak earnestly about these fears, not only that, but women have been speaking earnestly about these type of fears for many years. She's not the first one to do this. It's been happening for many years now. And so the idea that that, that final line of the song is even true, it's actually disproved. The irony here is that it's disproved by the success of the song and, and, and her very, very rapid rise to fame. One of the things I find really troubling about the song is effectively it's, it's continuing this absurd uh, and false approach to male-female relations where what it's doing is it's pitting men against women. And, and the way this song allows you to do that is it wants you to buy into a bit of a falsehood. And the falsehood that it wants you to buy into is that this list of fears here is exclusive to females. That's the first part of the falsehood. Well, when you look at that list, in actual fact, that's not true. A lot of men would say, I recognize a lot of those fears that I have about my own life, you know, walking in dark places late at night, etc. You know, these are not exclusively fears that females would have. So if you accept that falsehood, that begins you on this journey of pitting men against women and saying, well, women are automatically in a victim class, whereas men are not. They are in not just the power class, but they're actually in the oppressor class in this particular song. The other part of the falsehood, of course, is the idea that's implicit in the song that men don't actually have anything to worry about. Now, sure, when it comes to issues of strength and size, there is an advantage that your average male has over your average female, and so some of these fears aren't going to be equal, if you like, in the way they are, are experienced in the world. But this idea that you focus exclusively on these fears and then forget about the fact that males will experience all sorts of other very serious fears of their own. Men have their own fears and, and we could actually list them if we wanted to, but again, I don't think that's helpful either because what that would be doing is perpetuating this idea that we should be pitting men against women in a struggle for who is the greater victim. That's not a healthy or helpful approach. But even more of a problem than that 
is what is very, I guess, explicit about the nature of how she has responded to the original complaint. The original complaint, or the original argument, the original idea that was put forward, of course, you'll remember, is that it would be a very, very scary time for men if we lived in a world where the presumption of innocence until proven guilty doesn't matter anymore, and that as soon as you accused a man of sexual assault or rape, he was to be considered guilty of that crime. Now that's a very serious and a very legitimate fear for men to, to have. Now she's not responding to that fear, but not only is she not actually responding to that fear, but she's just listed her own fears. Now she has not actually mentioned or referred to the original and very serious fear that was raised. She's just listed a whole lot of separate and new fears that she has. But even more of a problem is the fact that she is actively dismissing that fear now. She is actively saying with this song, that just because I experience my own set of different fears over here, your fear that you have, which is a very serious fear and a very legitimate one about what would happen if uh, witch trials and hysterical mobs became the, uh, the sort of the order of the day, she's saying you can dismiss that fear, it doesn't count. Effectively, this is one big case of whataboutism. Where someone raises a legitimate concern, a very serious point that we should all consider, and then in response, someone else says, but what about this? And, and uses the what about this to dismiss the seriousness of this issue over here. That's what she's doing here. She's dismissing a very, very serious fear that we should all be concerned about. Because whether females like it or not, pretty soon that sort of approach to justice, where guilt until proven innocent becomes the norm, will be turned on them as well. And they're not going to want to live in that society. Here's the thing, imagine if I did this to her. So imagine if she expressed her fear about, say, sexual assault and rape. And she said, I've had friends who've been the victims of this. And, and, and I've, I've seen this. I know that rapes have happened close to where I live. And, and I've been approached on the street by men who were very nefarious in their behavior and what they said to me. And I had to rush home and lock myself inside. So imagine she expressed that legitimate fear and said, I'm afraid of, of sexual assault and rape. I'm, I'm afraid of becoming a victim of that and living in a society where I could become a victim of, of, of that kind of thing. And so I turned around and I said to her, yeah, but what about my fears? Look, I've got a list of fears. And I, and I wrote this really short. Sugar, sugary sort of syrupy sweet little ditty uh, you know using my ukulele and I listed all my fears and then basically said y yeah I'm dismissing your fear it doesn't count the reason she's getting away with this is because of the fact that this is one of the ways in which uh, the feminine genius has a certain prowess and power in the world. And, and that's because of the fact that there is a sort of feminine sweetness to what she's doing. There is a sort of sugary, uh, syrupy sort of sweetness to this song. And it is a lovely little ditty. We can be very easily fooled about the fact that in actual fact, what this thing is doing is dismissing a legitimate fear and saying, oh, who cares? And it's ridiculing that fear. Now, of course, some people are going to want to respond and they're going to say, well, uh, if you're not a rapist or a sexual assaulter, then you've got nothing to fear. No, 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 you don't understand the situation. People are not afraid that they will be caught for sexual assault and rapes that they perpetrated years ago and have kept hidden. People are afraid that they will be wrongly accused, falsely accused of sexual assaults and rapes, and they will find themselves in a society where they will have no way of defending themselves against the serious damage and harm that would be done to them in such a culture where you've got no defense anymore. You can't call on the presumption of innocence until proven guilty and that the accuser has to corroborate their claims. That's the fear. The, pe the people here, are, uh, the sort of, certainly the vast majority, are not afraid that they're going to get caught for crimes that they've kept hidden. Now imagine saying that to a group of people during the Salem witch trials. Oh, just chill out, ladies. It's all good. You know, we're, we're just a witch hunting mob. We're not here for innocent females. We're only here for the witches. So don't panic. If you're not a witch, you've got nothing to fear. And what's even better is we've got a lovely test that's going to get you off the hook. What we'll do is we'll tie you to a chair and we will put that chair on the end of a seesaw and we will dip that chair into the local lake or river and we'll hold you underwater for five or ten minutes or so. And, and, and this is like, this is this foolproof test that we've got. Trust me, justice will be served here. If you survive underwater, unassisted and you can breathe for 10 minutes underwater and we pull you up again and you're still alive, you're a witch. But if you die while you're underwater, the good news is you weren't a witch. So you don't have anything to worry about. We've got a test that will help us. 
Do you see how absurd that approach is? It's a complete absurdity that's not addressing the real concern here and the very legitimate fear. This does not help. This should not be a game of who is the greater victim. This should not be a, 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 a game of let's compare oppression points or fear points. Which What fears do you have? Are your fears worse than my fears? Well, then you must be more of a victim than I am. No. This absurdity of pitting males against females is not helping us. This tribalism between the sexes is actually so destructive and so counterproductive. Because here's the really interesting thing. I think that what Lindsay Lab wants is something that I also want. I want to see more men in the world who act with virtue. Now, you could say I have a bit of a selfish uh, sort of interest here, a selfish ulterior motive in the fact that I've got four daughters. So I want them to grow up in a world where they can be surrounded by, by men who are going to be virtuous and who are going to love them and treat them with care and respect and actually protect and nurture them with their masculine strength. So I've got a bit of an ulterior motive, sure. But beyond that, I also want to live in that society. As a male, I don't want to live with a group of men who are barbarians and who have no control of their, their uh, emotions, who have no control of their actions, who just act purely according to self-gratification. I want to live in a world where I am surrounded predominantly by men of virtue. And here's the thing. I think she wants to live in that world too. But one of the problems, of course, is that militant third and fourth wave feminism has actually actively undermined this idea that men should be virtuous and use the gift of their strength to protect and nurture women. And the way that they've done this is by continually claiming that women don't need protecting and that somehow you're a sexist or you're a misogynist if you do things like open doors for females. Or you think that females need protection. No, that doesn't make you a misogynist at all. It makes you a good and virtuous man who recognizes that you have a certain physical advantage. And the truly just and virtuous thing to do with that physical advantage is to put it at the service and the well-being of those around you who don't have that same advantage that you have. So here's the thing. We miss all of that. And all of that goes right out the window when we create this war of the sexes, this war between men and women, this, this power struggle, this idea that men are part of this evil patriarchy and that they are the oppressor class and that females are automatically born into a victim class, which by the way, I'm not teaching my daughters that because I don't want them to think that. I, I, I'm going to teach my daughters prudence about how they should operate in the world and predators they need to be aware of, but I'm not going to teach them that they're in a victim class and they should live their life in a state of fear like this song seems to be suggesting. But what's not helping us is this, this battle where we effectively create this false idea that men are the oppressors and that females are the oppressed and they're automatically born into those two classes. That's not helping females and it's not helping males. In fact, it's actually getting worse for males because what's happening is this idea that there is somehow a war and an oppression going on between males and females. It allows us to dismiss legitimate fears when they are expressed by men because what we do in response is we do what this song does and we say, hey, but I'm more of a victim than you are, so that means that I can dismiss your legitimate fears. As per usual, I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the content I'm creating and you'd like to see more of it, then please support me on PayPal or Patreon. There is a link for both in the video description below. That's right, I can hear my theme music too. I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily Question.